such an exciting moment. <laughs> <laughs> So now that Unite is going on, Unity has finally revealed the nested prefabs feature and it is a super exciting system, I just gotta say that from the beginning, and it introduces new prefab workflows to Unity to make our development process a lot easier. And therefore, in this video, we are going to take a deep look into what you can do with these new workflows and how you can use them in your projects. If you guys wish to see more of Unity's new features covered in these videos, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, most importantly, so you stay up to tune for new content. Now, with that being said, guys, open up Unity on your computer and let's get started with this. One kiss is all it takes Falling in love with me Possibilities I look like all you need One kiss is all it takes Falling in love with me Hey guys, it's Sam here and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Unity 2018 Beginner's Guide. If you're not familiar with the series or the show that we are running on the channel, we basically cover some of the latest and newest features that are provided by Unity in 2018 and give you guys a quick overlook of the newest features and see how it works. Also like a little tutorial aka slash a little guide to make sure you guys get started as soon as possible instead of wasting like 30 minutes of your time just for a video. And now basically we we also have more in-depth tutorials on the channel so in case you guys want to see more of the prefab workflow improvements on this channel make sure to subscribe it's super important and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on new content and obviously that also goes for in case you want to watch more of unity 2018 features this is the right channel where you can find everything like that but now, so let's get started. So basically, Unity has released this brand new page on their website, which is called Prefab Workflow Improvements. And you can basically use it to get early access to Prefab Workflow Improvements, including nested prefabs, prefab variants, and prefab mode. Now, these three features are basically this, what, what this, prefab workflow basically consists out of now the new one obviously the old one was a little clunky so they updated it all um you can basically click to get the preview build and it's gonna take you to this website which is a little <laughs> uh html site let's just say that which is not a problem obviously so you just basically go for windows or mac depending on which version you have and then just go ahead and download this whole unity editor if you haven't already go ahead and do this pause the video go ahead and do this and then just resume the video after it's done if you have it already let's get right into unity so we have got quite a lot of features to cover in this video obviously because the whole prefab workflow has now shifted and also been upgraded so i want to get started with the most simple and noticeable changes so far now if you start by looking into the hierarchy you can now now not only see the name of your objects but also an icon that is representing it the icon basically just tells you if this is a prefab or just a game object in the old versions of unity the text for the name of the objects just used to turn blue when you created a prefab out of that game object but now the icon changes with it so this makes it super easy for you to tell apart your objects in your scenes and understand which one of them are prefabs and which one of them are just game objects now if you once again bounce back to an older version of unity in order to modify a prefab you had to add it to your scene then make the necessary changes like changing the appearance and then overwrite the old prefab with the new instance you have modified in your scene. Since that took a little too much time and since it felt a little more robust, Unity has created a brand new prefab mode which basically allows you to edit prefabs in the editor without necessarily adding them into your scenes. So now what you can do is you can either double click on a prefab through your hierarchy click open prefab button in the inspector or just straight up open the prefab that's already in your scene when you do this you will realize that the scene window is, is now overridden by a panel that is the prefab mode so the prefab mode is very similar to the scene window and in fact you have literally the same options in the prefab mode as you do in the scene window like enabling and disabling post processing switching between 2d and 3d and all sorts of things like that so let's just quickly go through all the new settings that are added with prefab mode now if you look at the top left corner you can see that it says something like scenes and then props if you click scenes you basically return to the initial scene you have opening unity if you however click on props 
it is going to highlight that prefab in your project tab and also return to that very specific prefab in case you are editing another prefab that's the child of the props prefab in this case. I know that might sound a little scary, but don't worry, we are going to go over how you nest prefabs with other prefabs in just a bit. And you will actually see a better visual example of how it actually looks when you are into multiple different prefabs and want to return to another one. But before moving on, we also have something called autosave. So if you have this box checked and make an edit to the prefab you're on, then it will automatically save that change and apply it to your prefab. If there are more than one of the same prefab in your scene, it will also automatically synchronize that change to your other prefabs in that scene. If you now wish to have the freedom of editing freely and saving on your own will, you can remove the check from this little box and it will pop up a little save button you can use to save the changes. And that's pretty much the prefab mode. So once again, this mode overrides the scene window while it is active. So you can't just move the prefab mode and keep the scene window where it is right now. That should not be a problem though, since you are not going to have to use both at the same time. And even if you do for some reason, then you can simply return back to the scene window and pop back right into the prefab mode in just literally in a matter of second. Obviously you still have the option to change a prefab in the scene also, but that will only now change its instance from now on. If you want to change all of the instances of that prefab at once, you basically just use prefab mode. Alright, so the next feature we're gonna move on to is called nested prefabs. Now this is probably the most significant, most anticipated feature you've ever heard of in Unity <laughs> because as soon as the Unity basically revealed this feature in like GDC I think it was yeah it should be GDC um, people were just hyping the hell out of this feature which is deserved okay the feature is amazing so what I have here in my project tab is basically a couple of prefabs to begin with. One is just a wood and one is called wood one, which basically has a couple of these woods. Now this is a nested prefab. And as you can see, it's a prefab and then it's a, another prefab that is inside of that prefab. It's basically the same object, the same model, the same prefab even, but I just basically nested them. So the way I did this is basically if I just delete that. So I've added one of these woods, right? Just a regular wood, there we go, uh, I'll align it. And then I place another one and did the same thing with this, aligned a little bit, rotation, perhaps just kind of like, yeah, something like that, 180 degrees, you know, just made it uh, look a little different than the other one at least. There we go. And then I basically made this, or you can do the other one as well. I made this one a child of the regular wood. And I can also rename this like wood uh, standing. There we go. And as you can see, this little prefab icon now turns into a pre prefab icon with a plus. And that means it's a child of this prefab, but it's now nested. So that's pretty much the main topic here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this parent prefab. Oh, I did not mean to delete that. So I will basically just rename it to be like wood. Let's say wood two, okay? Because we already have one wood and another wood two. So now I'm just going to make this a prefab by uh, adding it to the project tab. Now you can see here, it's saying create prefab. Would you like to create a new original prefab or a variant of this prefab? So the whole variant word here is something that we're going to cover in just a little bit. But basically what this is asking is, hey, do you want to create a whole new prefab out of this object? Or do you just want to make a variant of the whole, you know, this wood itself? Like, is this going to be the parent object or are you just, you know, creating something new? We're going to go ahead with the original prefab for now. And there we go. So now we have created a nested prefab inside of our project tab. So by using the regular scene window, I can now basically just place a bunch of these wood models, uh, nested prefabs rather into my scene like that, boom, like five copies of them. And now let's say these were very important objects for me and I wanted to change all of them at once. And I just wanted to change it by using the prefab. Well, now, with the prefab mode, I can do that, right? So by using these nested prefabs, you can edit very detailed way of all of the objects and their properties and their appearances. So 
For instance, now we have the prefab mode open here, and as you can see, it says wood 2. Now, this is the parent object, right? This is the whole parent itself, which is the original prefab that we just created. And we also have a wood standing. Now, if we click this little arrow here, it's going to open the prefab asset in the pr uh, prefab mode, basically. And now you can see that we have scenes, wood 2, and then wood. So what this is, it's basically a little directory to where you are right now. So if we had several more objects, obviously it would just pop up this list. But right now we're inside of wood and if I want to return to wood 2, I can just click it. Or if I go back here and I just want to return to the scene window because I'm done here, I can click on scenes, which is super, super good. But obviously we want to edit this whole prefab, the parent prefab itself. So we're going to double click this. And now that it's open in the prefab mode, I can pretty much do anything I want to. So I can pretty much like rescale it. And you can see that it's rescaling every single one of them in the game window, which is still so such an astonishing feature to me. Uh, because obviously this is nested and it's saying, hey, we're editing this prefab itself from the, the prefab mode. So go ahead and synchronize everything now. Obviously, if I wanted to make sure that this is not synchronized automatically, I could just turn off autosave and now I can resize as much as I want and it's not going to save by, by itself. So I can now click save and it's obviously going to save this, which is very small now. <laughs> And while I'm doing this, I can also return to Wood 2, which is the whole parent itself, and rescale all of them together, like just like this. And I can rotate, edit all of these fields, and do whatever I want, which is super simple by using the new prefab mode. And now that we have nested prefabs in our back pocket, next feature that I want to cover is called prefab variants. So this is basically a variant of an already existing prefab which you can create. This allows your prefab variant to inherit all the objects, properties, and other settings from the prefab it is a variant of, but still lets you override the settings you wish to edit. So, for example, just to simplify this, if you have several woods in your scene, like I do here in my case, and you want all the woods to look the same, except for just a few of them, which you want to edit the colors of, for example, you can do that by creating a variant of the wood prefab itself. Now, before showing anything else, I just want to explain something super important about variants. When you create a variant of a prefab, it will literally be the same prefab itself, right? Then when you modify something like its color, it will override the color it inherits from the head prefab you created a variant of. Then it will stop inheriting that overridden setting. So now if you go ahead and make changes to the head prefab of your variant, it will change the variant too but skip the overridden settings you have modified of the variants. So for our case, just to simplify this and demonstrate a little further, everything would change, right? Except for the color, because we have already overridden the property of that variant. So it will not bother you in that way, and it's just going to skip whatever you're changing and just focus on everything else you're changing with the head prefab. All right, so here we are back into our demo scene, and I actually got rid of the three wood models or wood prefabs that we had added into our scene. I didn't need them, so I just pretty much deleted them. But so we have the wood 2 prefab, which is like the head prefab, and now what I want to do is I want to create a variant of this. So how do I do this? You basically right-click on the prefab in your project tab, and then pick Create, Prefab Variant, and then you get the option to actually rename the variant itself. Now you can go with the default name, which is literally going to be the object or the prefab name and then variant, which is perfectly fine. And what's interesting with variants is that it's automatically inheriting all of the properties by its parent or head or whatever game object prefab is kind of like inheriting from, right? So if I were to place this in our scene, you can see that it's literally the same objects, properties, scale, rotation, everything is the same as the head itself. Now, if I were to edit the wood to prefab, the head prefab, and let's say we're going to scale this up a little bit, you can see that all of them, including the variant, are all scaling up. And that's simply because the prefab variant is obviously inheriting all of the properties, scales, and all that kind of stuff, even material and components from the head start prefab, whatever you might want to call it, right? Whatever prefab is actually inheriting from. And you can actually break this rule, like I said before, or rather in a better language, you can override one of the settings or multiple settings at a time by basically editing those or modifying those properties you want to override. So in case we open up the variant in our prefab mode, 
and scale this down, you're gonna see that it's only the variant that is scaling down because the parents obviously do not inherit from the variant, the variant is inheriting from the parents. But now, so since we have modified the scale of this uh, variant, we now have a blue line that is representing the fact that we have done something that's not really synchronizing to the prefab that it's inheriting from. So if we were to want to synchronize this, you can literally just right click on scale, apply to prefab wood 2, and boom, there we go, it's back to normal. So now let's go ahead and scale this up a little bit, the variant itself. As you can see, it's still not you know affecting the other prefabs, obviously, which is uh, the correct way of doing this. So now we have this blue line again, and we're gonna let it be there, okay? So now if we go back to wood 2, the prefab, the head prefab, which is like the boss right here, and let's say we're gonna scale this down this time, okay? So these two prefabs are gonna scale down, but even though the variant is supposed to inherit all the properties from the head prefab, the boss, it's still not scaling down, and that's because we have this little blue line here, rather, which basically means that we have edited the scale of this variant, and it's now overriding the, the inheritance that it's getting from the prefab, the head prefab, basically. And that is pretty much it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed watching and found this helpful. If you did and would like to see more videos of Unity 2018 features and learn them, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a thumbs up to show your support. If you wish to become a part of our community, by the way, you can also join our Discord server called Elite Devs, which I'm going to leave a link to in the description box. Now, now, I would also like to see a comment by you stating which feature of Unity 2018 you're looking forward to the most. Is it Nested Prefabs or HDRP, one of the other templates for the render pipeline? What is it? Let us know basically and we will run a discussion in the comments. I will also be aiming to make more videos on topics you guys enjoy the most. So once again, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you in the comment section and our Discord server. Have a good night guys. Peace out. One kiss is all it takes. Falling in love with me. Possibilities. I look like all you need. One kiss is all it takes. Falling